All right, guys, I haven't really opened up the video yet. Today is coilover day for the cruise, and I couldn't be any more excited. So here's what we got going on. Just a little uh, case board set up real quick right here. Um, here's the rears and the fronts. You guys know what this looks like. Uh, got the sway bar and links and stuff. But yeah, we're going to be putting this on the cruise, and I'm running stock wheels and tires right now because I sold mine to Austin. His car's right there. So we should be able to go pretty low, and I'm pretty hyped about that. Dude, I'm so hyped that they I know, gave dude. you this already. It came like that. Like, you don't understand, like, how much of, how much time and effort that saves. So clearly we have uh, somebody that knows what they're talking about here. That fitment on Austin's cruise. The rears are kind of messed up. He did strip out one of the studs on the spacer, so he's running stock tires and, you know, still pretty good fitment. I don't think he adjusted it at all, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. Maybe... Maybe a little bit lower than that, so. Guys, I am super hyped to get this done. Uh, we're gonna start the install right now, so. Yeah, probably just set up a time lapse and then explain to you guys what's going on as we uh, get everything installed. All right, so pulled the brake line off of the little bracket thing. And uh, to, to get started on the strut assembly, we'll take out the, oh, your brakes are hot. Yeah, dude, we'll take, take out your um, sway link here. So it's just gonna be like a, I actually don't know what this is. It's gonna be tool tools, so it's kind of a pain. Uh, and then we'll take out your strut and it should just pop right out. And we also have to take the bolt out yeah. up top here. So I'm gonna take my sway bar off, or my uh, strut bar. Let's get into it, boys. All right, so to take out this, um, assembly here, you have to use two tools. Uh, this is a Torx uh, 40, uh, and then this is an 18 millimeter socket, or wrench I mean. So you gotta hold it, hold the center so it doesn't uh, move, and then, uh, you know, loosen it. So break it here. Oop. Go. Sunday morning. Yeah. I feel like you feel like an asshole for doing this at 7 a.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty loud. Let's not do that. Let's just wait. Let's just use the regular tools. And tools. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's not fun. I just, it's 7 a.m. on a Sunday. My neighbors already hate me, and sometimes I forget why, then I'm like, oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> dude, this almost out, bro. Bolts are like really time consuming, bro. Well, Alright, it's gonna be like a three hour process, so I will come back whenever we get this bolt out. Hi! Yeah. Listen, um, I think we talked about the whole car time. Oh, no? Okay. Little update we got both of the lower strut bolts out, so the only one left is the one up top here. But we're gonna take this bolt out. Do we have to? We probably have to take out both of them to get the strapper off. I think. I would. I would agree. Yeah. So, let's do that now, man. Fifteen sixteenths, if you have one. More than fifty thousand miles, or sixty, whatever you're at. Started. All right. So we've uh, taken out the top mount. We've taken out the two um, strut bolts and. The uh, sway end link, there it's still in there, but as soon as we drop the jack here, it should just kind of like fall apart, and I'm gonna try to catch it while it does that. Okay. Look at wow. that. Right. Boom. And strut, here you go. Sweet, dude. Answer throwing this into the trash. No, we're keeping it. I, I know, but. Just in case. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. We're just gonna forget about it. It's like a stepchild. That's pretty sick, man. I think I can just drive like that, right? All that positive camera. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Actually, it was kind of cool. Yeah. 
Dude, it's like the it's like the cars kachow thing. Like, <laughs> I'll just uh, um, take apart the bottom of the sway link, which is probably honestly the hardest part of this whole process it looks because like a bitch. you have to do it backwards um, and the whole like having to do two things at once thing. So we have to take that just it. that bolt right there yeah. out. Yeah. And then uh, and it's just like this one. If you guys can see how it has like the little hex in the middle you have to like put the uh torx bit in there and then use a these ones are so much easier yeah no they're not are they oh you have to do the same it's thing the same exact thing damn dude i was hoping they were just like lol no rip okay but yeah you guys get the point you gotta put the torques in there and then use a wrench to take it off so we're gonna do that all right so jonah's here just finished putting the uh sway and link in i have my struts and most of the way, cool liver, I guess. We can call it a coil liver now. All right, so the, the best way of going about this, you know, putting the coil liver in, just dangle the top of it, just thread it on a little bit so it's easier to um, to sit in there. Um, okay, so once you have it dangling, uh, as Jonas can see, it's really hard to get it lined up because you're lowered now. So I like to use the jack, put it under the rotor, and then raise it up so that, um, or you can just manhandle it. I'm actually kind of impressed. Yeah. You're gonna put it in just backward to how you took it out. Cool. I wanted it to fall so bad. You just want me to make all the mistakes that you made. Whoa, hey. So it makes you feel better. This is 100% true, but I haven't made any mistakes today, so. Wait, all right, so I do apologize no, for. No, I, I just got it, as you walked away. <sighs> what are you doing, man? No one thought it didn't happen. First no, point, you, bro. You could do it. 4%. All right, so. I like to use a breaker bar, but you're gonna need um, a 13, a 15, 16 socket. We use vice grips, as you saw. Um, a couple of different torques. This one is what is it? There we go. A 40 torx and a. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, what is this? This is really small. I think it's 30. So a 40 and a 30 Torx, a 17, um, oh another one, 45, and a, another 18, a couple of different 18s. Yeah, so the hardest part of this, like I said earlier, was not putting the actual strut in, but connecting the sway, oh, I'm already doing it all the way, the sway in link. So if you could tell, it's like way taller. But I mean, this should go up, right, because we're going to lower it more? Uh, I, I don't remember. Just like getting it in there the first time though and getting it in there tight is crucial. If you don't get it in there tight, and I'm talking like before you start adjusting the right height, um, it's gonna make a noise and I'm not sure if it gets loose, but it'll just continue to make a noise while you're driving and it'll drive you nuts. And if you don't know what it is, then I'm telling you right now, check your freaking sway and link. It's probably what it is. Every time I've ever installed, coilovers or lowering springs or any kind of suspension work, I always forget to tighten it correctly. And this is how you do it right now. You're gonna make sure that when you tighten it, it's uh, it's level within the hole. So like, this moves around and you're not gonna wanna tighten it just however you're, you, you can get it in there. You wanna make sure that it's actually level. Um, otherwise, you're not gonna get a, a flush fitting inside this hole here and it'll be loose. Uh, especially when you like put the weight on the on the um, you know the strut here, it'll move around and it's gonna make a bunch of noise. So to get that, uh, you're gonna need to use the jack. Um, so it'll probably be better if we wait to adjust the right height. Um, and then the sway length is actually pretty adjustable itself. So um, we bought these used. I don't know what this guy was thinking like with his setup because it didn't make any sense to me. It seemed like he was running like stock height. Yeah, that's what it looks like. To me at least so. so I'm not gonna trust this guy but I'm gonna try to get it in how it is right now but I'm pretty confident we're gonna have to adjust it a little bit and when you buy these brand new they're all the way shortened so you're gonna have to lengthen it uh, regardless um, you're just gonna have to kind of figure that out sorry I think it's a t30 for anybody watching this, this one so it's gonna be the same one as this way uh, links the, the case work so definitely not gonna really like torque this down to you know spec but just get it as tight as humanly possible dude you don't need tools bro just use your fingers what a man your big strong fingers bro <laughs> all 
All right, real quick, Jones got excited here. We want to see what the wheel looks like. Sit on that. Yeah, you're still pretty tight. Oh, that's true, man. I was expecting it. I mean, how much does it compress? Like maybe an inch? Maybe? I uh, yeah. I so yeah, we're definitely gonna have to lower it. We're going to. I mean, the, the this this guy was definitely running stock height. You? No, oh, that guy. The guy I, that I'm. Has. Whoever we whoever we bought these from, a, thank you for the amazing deal. And they look brand new, so I don't know if you cleaned them up or just take care of them. You're awesome. However, what, what were you what were you doing? Were you running stock high, or did you just like take them back to the factory for us? Um, I am genuinely curious. Hopefully, you follow Jonas on YouTube because I'd love to know what the f you were doing with these coilovers. Uh, anyways, okay, so I'm like, I spent the last 20 minutes freaking out, but um, if you jack up the strut, uh, or not strut, the hub assembly um, high enough, watch your knee there, uh, it seems to line up. Look at that. Mm. So basically, what he's talking about is sway bar end link lines up with the hole perfectly if you just kind of put some load on the spring. And we're going to be adjusting the height anyway, so it's going to be pretty close, and it should be okay. So he's just going to put that on, and we should be good for the front end for now, and then we'll move on to the rears, right? Yeah. And then we'll uh, adjust height whenever we're done. The rears are like cake. Okay guys, uh, for the rear, what we did was put a jack underneath the spring. I'll kind of try to get this camera back here so I can show you. The jack is underneath the spring, and we kind of lift it up just about half an inch, and then you take out the bolt on the uh, shock right here, and then basically, we have a jack on that side also. And we're just gonna lower this down a little bit and the springs will come out. And I'll show you guys that. We're gonna do it right now. So let's go. So I'm gonna do this side. Oh, shoot, wrong. Go down like kind of slow. I'm going. Alright, so that is all the way down. And now uh, we're just gonna have to figure out how to get these springs. Come out. I don't know how Austin did, but he's going to have to probably explain to me how this is going to happen. But there we go. So that's basically how you do the rear, uh, get the stock part out, and then we have to take these bolts out up here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the stock springs are actually kind of a pain. They're, they're so big. Yeah, I just realized that. But you just kind of got to manhandle it for like one second and just pops on. <laughs> got to just kind of twist and pull now. We need these things. Yeah, so these rubber, like, um, I don't know what you call them, like pads or whatever. Uh, there's really no harm in keeping them. They add such little actual height, and they just kind of like to seat the spring. So they're they're both universal, same thing. One on the bottom. All right, and then uh, put one on the top here. I don't know if it'll stay by itself. You will grab the spring. Do we have to take the uh, strut out or the shock? Yeah. But you're gonna set the spring here. They're universal. Doesn't matter which one you grab. Set on the bottom here. The uh, nope. that will not stay in there. The small part of the spring goes towards the top. So yeah. if you guys here pull it out real quick. So if you guys are looking at the uh, case port springs, the bottom part is flat and it's got like a larger opening on the top. So the top part goes up. So the the small part goes up. Sorry, worded that kind of weird. But uh, I guess we gotta. Just wait on those for now. Or? Yeah, we're gonna. Have, it, it's kind of hard to put them in, um, or like they need to be compressed, and there's such an angle that. You, oh, I guess they can just sit there. Anyways, uh, we need to check out the strut. All right, let's do it. So it's actually only by two bolts up here, which is are just 18 millimeter sockets, and this just is. That's all it's holding in. Super simple. So we re re reuse that bracket, correct? Yeah, we we'll use reuse this bracket. And pretty sure it's how is this on here? Oh, there's a another bolt up here that I totally forgot about. But it just holds on the bracket. There's no actual like pressure with the strut or anything. We'll just take that out. Sweet. Perfect. Guys, uh get yourself an impact gun. Yep. So in your uh coilover kit you were given four little uh prongs, little orange sticks, and they adjust the stiffness. Um, you can adjust the front whenever you like, and it's it's a good idea to like adjust them perfectly. But the rear, uh, to adjust them, you have to take this whole strut out. So it's not a big deal, but that requires taking the wheel off, 
and removing you know from the top up here uh, which you don't really want to do unless you have to I guess but anyways you might as well just turn them all the way stiff uh, in the beginning um, I don't want that to scare you but uh, you don't really need it it's not that important so you might as well just turn them all the way stiff because that way you can't go wrong all right, it's, uh, it's better to be full stiff instead of have it too soft because if you bottom out your car completely and the suspension just got, completely goes all the way up, it's going to do more damage than it would have if you just put it full stiff and then run it like that until you get to the point where you want to make an adjustment. And then uh, whenever you guys decide to make adjustments, just do it slowly. And I know it's like kind of time consuming. You have to take it all the way out and everything. but you know you, you don't want it to bottom out all the way and do damage to your car so good idea to just set it to full hard and everything should be okay also we're going pretty low on my car so we're setting it to full stiff and it's probably gonna remain that way until I decide to raise it up a little bit so that's also another thing if you guys are going trying to go really low then definitely set it stiffer than more stiff than more soft so I am not judging anyone um, but with the factory bumper and uh, factory size wheels, y there should really be no reason that you don't take out the perches and go all the way to the ground. I am sorry, but I am lower than any stock cruise just because of the body kit that I happen to have, and I have no problem with it. So, slamming the case boards at least, I don't know about BCs or anything else, but case boards, you can absolutely max them out and still have zero problem. Um, yeah, I've had some crazy driveways and potholes and dips, and the bumper is simply just not low enough for it to matter. So, especially with the, the stock wheels, there, there's really no reason to not go all the way low. It looks great, and it handles way better than, I don't know, you do it. I don't know why you spend $800 on coilovers if you're not going to slam to the ground. Good advice, man. Life tips from Austin. Go team. Alright, so we are going to put this... Back into the car, I think. Yep. Just yeah, it just goes up again. All right, same spot. Um, use the same bolts. After you put the bolt in the top of the uh, little holder piece, this thing right here, uh, it just goes in in the stock position. So super easy. So we are putting in the last uh, bolt, um, which you know the holds on the bottom of the strut and the spring. We have all the corners done. This is the last one. So the final step is actually to put on the wheels, drop it down, and then adjust the front. We don't need to adjust the back because I already know from previous experience that you can just slam the, the what is that? A bug? Actually, you can already slam the back with no problem. Um, uh, with the front though, there's actually a ton of adjustment and like I said, this previous owner he has some weird setup. So we're not even gonna risk it and like try to guess just way easier to put on the wheels, lower it on the ground, measure both sides, and make one easy adjustment and have it perfect the first time. Um, so some things to know if you haven't ever lowered your car before and you're putting it on the ground. A, if you don't have a low profile jack, and when I say low profile, that is not a low profile, and honestly, I don't even think that yours is a low profile yeah, either. See if I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this is not a low profile jack. When you are slammed, and even after case boards, um, you will not be able to get your jack out from under the car. Period. I'm like, sorry about you. Um, you're gonna need to buy some kind of wood, or uh, I'm not even sure. I, I would only use like wood and stuff. Uh, and honestly, I would put like two or three to start with, just to be safe, because um, it's not you're not gonna get screwed, but you're not gonna be able to get the jack into the car. And if you don't have any other transportation, you're gonna you're gonna be screwed. You're gonna have to take out the suspension, go to the store, uh, and figure that out. So also, uh, we're gonna find out in a second uh, if you don't know what three wheeling is. Uh, it's the coolest thing ever, but. Uh, um, it's gonna happen, and if you're not careful, you will drop the car. I'm not trying to like scare you or anything, but you do need to be aware that when you have, when you're this low, 
Dude, look at that. Uh, this, is have... on, this is not even on the ground. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, no, you're fine. Look at this gap, guys. Like, this is gonna go up. More. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna tuck the wheel. Yeah. When it's when you're when you're this low and you're this stiff, uh, you have absolutely pretty much no travel. I mean, he's off the ground and uh, it's like not even touching. So you can actually take out one of these jacks and that will still be like that. It's not gonna drop or anything. So if you're not careful and you're not being um, we could we can probably demonstrate that as we're putting the car down on the ground. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very easy to get it up on three wheels. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Oh, I just caught that. Mm. <laughs> oh, shit. It honestly didn't feel free. <laughs> wow. Son of a bitch, dude. Yeah, lower the jack. Hey, look at that. Nothing changed. Take it the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so we're three wheeling right now. Hey! This, this is exactly what we're talking about. This is a milestone. Exactly what we're talking so about. So if you're not careful, um, you can rock the car. I don't really know the worst case scenario, but probably nothing too good. But I mean, as you can see, like nothing supporting this corner of the car, so well, I don't know why. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah. So go ahead and start lowering the rest of the car and make some final adjustments. All right. So we'll go ahead roll it off of the wood so that it's actually uh, on the ground. Uh, you shouldn't have to take it that slow because the high, the front is so freaking high. I'm sorry? You're not gonna have to like roll it off that slow or anything because you're so high in the front. <laughs> you're okay. <laughs> mm. She's not perfect fitment, but I just, I love a good tucked tire. Like I know I know this is stock right now, but we have plans. We have plans for wheels. I just gotta get the money. <laughs> and we'll have wheels. It'll be cool. This is good. Pretty thick, dude. This is good. Just, like just get some like sweet hubcaps. We'll go to AutoZone later maybe. Nah, dude. We're on stock. Stock, bro. <laughs> She's all stock, bro. Alright. As long as it's the same on each corner. Four inches? Cool. That's a pretty easy number. Should be four inches. I hope it's four inches because there's nothing we can do about it. It's about four inches. <laughs> six, six inches. So we need to come down two inches. Yeah. Okay. And the final. Same, six inches. Six inches. Sweet. Okay, so that, that was pretty level. I'm not super surprising because, you know, it was set up by the previous owner. And I'm assuming these were already settled. So if you didn't have, if you never had coilovers and they're brand new, which these are not to our best understanding, uh, you're gonna wanna wait a couple days and drive on it before you make your adjustments. Like even if it's like an inch or two off, don't waste your time because um, they'll settle as the weight of the car distributes over each corner. Um, they're, it's gonna be messed up in a couple days anyway. So we don't need to wait that long because they've already been driven on and they've already um, like been worn in. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jack up the car again. We're gonna have to use the blocks most likely because it's too low. Like I'm pretty sure that your jack won't even fit under the car. Yeah. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Um, there's a, on the case boards, there's a black collar focus. Focus. There's a black collar on the bottom. You're gonna loosen that. And then you're just gonna measure two inches of the uh, threads. And then you'll use the top collar to rotate the entire strut. Um, this is separate from your preload, which uh, you can honestly leave from the factory if you haven't adjusted it already. It's two inches right there. And then this whole thing should just... No, you have to use the spanners. Huh? Yeah. And it's gonna be a bitch. It's gonna take, it's gonna take a minute. First adjustment is an ass. Oh. Um, I think I just, yeah, I totally just loosened it and fucked my preload, but it's cool with you. Okay. Wait, you're gonna, we're gonna lower, we're gonna turn the, um, these, uh, collars, and the whole strut will sink into the strut. Which, which way do I turn it? Uh, I don't know, we'll just gonna pick away. I don't actually remember. It's been a while. So we're just gonna turn it, there we go. I think, I think it's to the right.
It's a little close. Pull out. Maybe. No. <laughs> You're laying on the frame. <laughs> I am so low, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that looks... That looks absolutely sick, dude. Even on stock wheels, that looks sick. Oh my god. I am... I'm so happy to see that. <laughs> bro. Dude, it's almost hitting the fender liner, bro. Yeah, so we're gonna have to drive, see if we actually went too low in the front. Yeah. Because obviously it looks good as... Shit, and honestly, I think we did a pretty good job, like, evening it out. See, it looks kind of like I'm bagged, but I'm not. Dude, this is so good. Bro, the static commitment. Guys, real. guys, I just wouldn't be able to do this without- I'm just kidding, bro. <laughs> all my money, bro. You guys didn't help at all. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love you guys. It's cool, bro. It's cool. We got it lower. Oh my god. I- I'm so happy. Oof. I'm so happy. Okay, so, what do you want to do now? Uh, drive it, but clean my hands first. Yeah, alright. So, so uh, let's wash up, kind of clean up the place yeah, a little bit, and take our test drive, see if we destroy anything. I, I will warn you, I shall tell you in the car. Okay. Okay, so this is the first time getting out of a sloped area. He's kind of freaking out more than he should, but he actually might scrape, but I'm not really sure. what you can and can't take. Oh my god, dude. Oh! Which way? Which way should I go? Left, left, left. Oh, baby. This is good. This is very, very good. Oh, dude, we got to dodge this one, bro. Oh, that's not too bad. Dodge that one, man. Oh, there it is. Damn, you feel that? <laughs> you feel that grip? That's what you call grip, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, my alignment is definitely off, though. It's, oh, yeah, it's yes. definitely off. Oh, God, here we go. Oh, it's pulling to the left a little bit. What time is it? 10.30? Oh, my gosh. Three and a half hours. Three and a half hour install. Not too shabby. I'm, I'm pretty uh, impressed and proud of our work. I'm very proud of that. It's good. Uh, you guys can't really see, but his lip is hanging off because he just pulled out of his steeple divot driveway and it totally tore it off. But yeah, tough luck, dude. This is the life of a lower car. Life, life of a lowered car, bro. I can't even talk, guys. Um, anyway, and there we go. You can probably like, actually see me now. Um, we are going to the car wash real quick, gonna wash the cars. I, I wasn't gonna wash mine over here, but I think I might do it and then just go back. And I'm gonna get my dad's reaction to the slammed Chevy Cruze. This thing is looking sick. I am so happy with uh, how it turned out and everything. So, uh, there's a car coming. I gotta move. So, uh, interesting little discovery. Uh, the car is actually too low to get into the garage. And I, tr I tried to pull it in. I uh, heard a loud bang and felt it jolt and the exhaust actually hit right there, so Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to raise it up tonight. There's there's just absolutely no way that I can run it this low, so um, I'll Probably do it later when it's not so hot. It's it's kind of kind of warm out here, so uh, That was, <laughs> was very interesting. It also scrapes on the speed bumps coming into my neighborhood, so that's not good either and uh, yeah, it, it really shouldn't do that. So uh, I'm gonna go inside and chill for a little bit, probably edit some of this video. I hope you guys are enjoying it and I hope it was helpful to all the people that are trying to install these themselves. Uh, probably just don't go this low if you uh, actually want a functional car. Uh, so I don't think I have anything else to say. It looks sick, dude, I, I friggin' love it. And it looks really good with the splitter and everything from like the front end but it's obviously just not functional. Uh, so, gonna have to raise it up a little bit. 
but it's all right, we'll figure it out. And yeah, cut the scene, dude. All right, so I just pulled up to Brennan's house. Uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the lowering the uh, coilovers, that's what it's called. I am super tired, guys. I got about three hours of sleep last night. So uh, I ended up raising the front by an inch and I'm gonna raise the rear a little bit because I scheduled an alignment tomorrow and I want it to be pretty close to the ride height that I'm gonna have whenever I get my new wheels. And hopefully that will be soon. I have uh, I have another car, it's a Mustang. I just need to sell that first and then should be able to get wheels. So that'd be pretty cool. But for right now, car looks really good and I'm super happy with it. Uh, here's, the, here's the booty. Looks really good. Fuel, fuel shots. 